Sunday after Trinity, we thank Almighty God for you being here, Thought It Not Robbery, to take time out of your busy schedules to worship our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We are glad to be here once again with you to celebrate this second Sunday after Trinity, and we are hoping that somehow, someway, that the words that are spoken today will be a rich blessing to your soul, that you will be edified, built up, and lifted up to do the will of God, because it's His will that we are empowered to go forth in the power of His might and do that which He has called each of us to do. And so today, we will be leading, Brother Gillis will be leading us into our morning prayer for the second Sunday after Trinity. Amen. The order for morning prayer for the second Sunday after Trinity begins on page 3 in the Book of Common Prayer. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Page 7. Let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done, and there is no help in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us miserable offenders. Spare thou those, O God, who bless their faults. Restore thou those who are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desired not the death of a sinner, but rather that he may turn from his wickedness and live, hath given power and command of his ministers to declare and pronounce to his people being penitent, the absolution and remission of their sins. He he, he pardoned and absorbed all those who truly repent and unfaintedly believe this holy gospel. Wherefore, let us beseech him to give us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that those things may please him that we do at this present, and that the rest of our lives hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at the last we may come to his eternal joy through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, open thy our lips. And our mouth shall show forth thy praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. The psalm is for today is Psalm 68. And it is also found on page 356 in the Book of Common Prayer. We will do the first 10 verses and responding by half verses. Let God arise and let his enemies be scattered. Let them also that hate him flee before him. Like as smoke vanishes, so shall thou drive them away. And like as wax melted, at the fire, so let the ungodly perish at the presence of God. But let the righteous be glad and rejoice before God. Let them also be merry and joyful. Or sing unto God and sing praises unto his name. Magnify him that rideth upon the heavens. Praise him in his name, Job, and rejoice before him. He is a father of the fatherless and defendeth the cause of the widows. Even God in his holy habitation. 
He is the God that maketh men to be of one mind in a house, and bringeth the prisoners out of captivity. But let it, the rudder beats, continue in scarceness. O God, when thou went forth before the people, when thou wentest through the wilderness, the earth shook, and the heavens dropped at the presence of God. Even as Sinai also was moved at the presence of God, who is the God of Israel. Thou, O God, set thy a gracious rain upon thy inheritance, and refreshed it when it was weary. Thy congregation shall dwell therein, for thou, O God, hast of thy goodness prepared for the poor. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Here beginneth our second lesson taken from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 14, and I will begin reading at verse 12. St. Luke, chapter 14, and I will begin reading at verse 12. Then said he also to him that bade him, When thou make a dinner or a supper, call not thy friends, nor thy brethren, neither thy kinsmen, nor thy rich neighbors. Least they also bid thee again, and a recompense be made thee. But when thou make a feast, call the poor, the maimed, the lame, the blind, and thou shalt be blessed, for they cannot recompense thee, for thou shalt be recompensed at the resurrection of the just. And when one of them that sat at meat with him heard these things, he said unto him, Blessed is he that shall eat bread in thy kingdom of God. Then said he unto him, a certain man made a great supper, and bade many, and sent his servants at supper time to say to them that were bidden, Come, for all things are now ready. And they all with one consent began to make excuse. The first said unto him, I have bought a piece of ground, and I must need go and see it. I pray thee, have me excused. And another said, I have brought five yoke of oxen, and I go to prove them. I pray thee, have me excused. And another said, I have married a wife, and therefore I cannot come. So that servant came and showed his Lord these things. Then the master of the house, being angry, said to his servant, Go out quickly into the streets and lanes of the city, and bring in hither the poor and the maimed, and the halt, and the blind. And the servant said, Lord, it is done as thou hast commanded, and yet there is room. And the Lord said unto the servant, Go out into the highways and hedges, and compel them to come in, that my house may be filled. For I say unto you, that none of those men which were bidden shall taste of my supper. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us stand and recite Jubilate Dio on page 16. O be joyful in the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with the song. Be ye sure that the Lord, he is God. It is he that has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. O oh, go your way into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him, and speak good of his name. For the Lord is gracious, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth from generation to generation. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, it is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The Apostles' Creed on page 16. Christians, what do you believe? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, 
and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the last thing. Amen. Just want to praise you. to another 
sharing and being a witness for what God has done for us yes. and through us. Yes. Amen? Amen. And so I would like to say to you this morning, I call your attention to the gospel lesson, Luke chapter 14, which was our second lesson, Luke chapter 14. And we will begin reading once again at verse number 12. Luke chapter 14, verse 12. Then said he also to him that bade him, When thou make a dinner or a supper, call not thy friends, nor thy brethren, neither thy kinsmen, nor thy rich neighbors. Least they also bid thee again, and a recompense be made thee. But when thou make a feast, call the poor, the maimed, the lame, the blind, and thou shalt be blessed, for they cannot recompense thee, for thou shalt be recompensed at the resurrection of the just. And when one of them that sat at meat with, with him heard these things, he said unto him, Blessed is he that shall eat bread in the kingdom of God. Then said he unto a certain man, made a great supper, and made many, and sent him and sent his servant, pardon me, at supper time, and said to him that were bidden, Come, for all things are now ready. And they all with one consent began to make excuse. The first said unto him, I have brought a piece of ground, I must needs go and see it. I pray thee have me excused. Then another said, I have brought five yoke of oxen, and I go to prove them. I pray thee have me excused. And another said, I have married a wife, and therefore I cannot come. So that servant came and showed his Lord these things, and the master of the house, being angry, said to his servant, Go out quickly into the streets and lanes of the city, and bring in him of the poor, and the maimed, and the halt, and the blind. And the servant said, Lord, it is done as thou hast commanded, and yet there is room. And the Lord said unto the servant, Go out into the highways and hedges, and compel them to come in, that my house may be filled. For I say unto you that none of those men which were bidden shall taste of my supper. The word of God for the people of God. Amen. Amen. So this morning, I would like to use for a subject, and it's in the form of a question. Will you make excuses also? Will you make excuses also? This is my question today. Have you ever asked someone to go with you somewhere or do something and you didn't get the answer you expected? All right, amen. And they began to give a whole lot of excuses, right? Amen. Well, in the text today, it is no different. It's in the same manner that they give the excuses because it is simple and it's plain. They don't want to do what you're asking them to do. Amen? Amen. 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 It's not that they don't have time to do it. Amen. It's not that they, that they can take a little time and say, well, come on, let me help you out. I'll do this for you this time. Or, or, or let's go and see and then if I'm happy, I'll stick around and weather the storm with you. Amen. Whatever the case may be. But in this case today, it is simply, I don't want to go and hang out with you today. Amen. 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 Oh, I don't want to accept what you're offering. Amen. Amen. So that is an interesting situation. So as I began to look through the text, and, you know, I says, Lord, there has to be a message in here for us to be edified and lifted up so that we can see, understand, and know that when we get a whole lot of excuses, that should not set us at naught to turn around and go back, but rather dig in deeper and move forward Amen. so that we can get the answers that we're looking for. Amen? Amen. And so as I begin to look through the text today, I've just got a few points to lift up. All right. And I'd like to give a little excerpt as to what is going on within this particular passage. And, and my first point this morning is that Jesus gives guidance for a successful outreach effort. Amen? Amen. Jesus gives guidance 
for a successful outreach effort. You know, I know sometimes when we go out into the highways and hedges and we begin to, to say witness to this person or witness to that person, or sometimes we might go out there with a little reservation. Not necessarily being wholehearted, but rather, let's see what's going to happen. All right. Listen, you got to have a made up mind, convinced. You have to be optimistic about the work that you're going to perform. Amen? Amen. You must believe that God is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Amen? Amen. If you go ahead and have it without that, my friends, it, it, you may as well turn around and come on back home because right. it ain't going to work for you. Amen? Amen? You need to trust God for all it's worth. Amen. And that is in everything that you accomplish for him. And listen, I, I know that Jesus gives this. Now, let, let's look in the text and examine and see what Jesus did for us in these verses. He gives us good guidance. Verse 12. Then said he also to him that bade him, When thou make a dinner or a supper, call not thy friends, call not thy brethren, neither thy kinsmen, nor the rich neighbors, least they come again to thee and recompense thee for what you've done to them. Yes. And so, here goes Jesus. Jesus knowing all things. Amen. Now, when you just imagine asking your family to do things sometimes, they don't always want to do it. They don't have time. You know, they got all, a thousand things to do. Amen. And so, you know, sometimes I don't even ask my family. I say, come on, let's go. We got something to do. Amen. I don't even ask them sometimes. Amen. That's how I handle my family and my friends. Amen? Amen. But when I deal with some stranger I don't know, right. now I got to do what Jesus says. Amen. Come on, let's go. Let's see how this thing going to work. Amen? Amen. And, but my, my family and friends, I don't all, you know, I said, sometimes if I got me a good friend and I can't say everything I need to say to my good friend, that might not be my good friend. Because yeah, right. I'm my brother's right. keeper. Amen? Amen. So, so if I am going to say something to my good friend, come on, bro. I need you today. I need you right now. So come on, let's go with me. Oftentimes I might get a yes. Come on, man. What do you want? Sometimes they say yes. Sometimes I get the answer no. Right, I got something to do. I get excuses sometimes. Amen. But sometimes when I just tell them come, uh -huh. I get them good results sometimes. That's how you have to handle your family and friends. Amen. Amen. And, and you, you say, hey, if you got some rich neighbors, look at We've been living together for a long time around here. Uh -huh. I want you to come on over to the house this evening. Don't ask them. Just say, come on over to the house this evening. That's how you handle them. But now when you go into the highways and hedges, now you're going to have to do what Jesus says to be able to win over those who are out there that you've given this invitation to. Amen? Amen. The, and it's going to work because Jesus has given some good guidance. It's going to work. It, it might not always work, but I can assure you, if you pour your heart out and the Lord done been working on them by the power of the Spirit, yeah. they're waiting on you to come. Amen? Amen? I guarantee you, it will be successful mission. And so, as it moves on in verse 13, but when you make a feast, call the poor, the maimed, and the lame, and the blind. Yes. See, oftentimes the people who are poor and needy, they don't have to give back. Amen. Right. So what they what they are going to do is be appreciative of what you have done for them. Amen. Amen. And so when you are appreciative for what somebody has done for you, you're willing to just show all of your kindness back to them. Amen. Amen. But listen, I don't have two pennies to rub together. I can't right. give you anything. Amen. Amen. That's all right, my brother. That's all right, my sister, because what Amen. I'm doing for you is from the living God, and it's going to bless you. So when you get to give, right. give it to somebody else. Amen. Pass the blessing on. Amen. Because I'm able to do it now, and you might be able to do it later. Amen. Amen. So don't worry about it. Just accept what I do and keep it moving. God's going to work it out for you. Amen. And then, and then it says, as thou shalt bless, verse 14, as thou shalt be blessed, for they cannot <coughs> recompense thee. Amen. For thou shalt be recompensed at the resurrection of the just. All right. Here's what our Lord Jesus Christ said. Don't worry about it. You keep doing your good stuff. 
at the resurrection of the just, you're yeah. going to get your good reward. Amen? Amen. I don't know about you, but that's music to my ears. As long as you keep doing and performing the work that he's called you to do, yeah. listen, me and Brother Gillis in the back, he said, go on and send up some timbers. Amen? Amen. Send the timbers up Amen. so that when you come before his presence, yeah. you can get your good and just reward for your faithful service. Amen? Amen. So Jesus gives us excellent guidance so that we can have a successful outreach effort. Amen? Amen. Secondly, here comes the excuses. All right. Woo, here comes the excuses. All right. Secondly. All right. So now as we look into the text, verse 15 says, And when one of them that sat at meat with him heard these things, he yeah. said unto him, Blessed is he that shall eat bread in the kingdom of God. All right. Then here's what Jesus says. A certain man made a great supper and bade many. I invited many to come mm -hmm. and sent his servant at supper time and said to them that were bidden, come for all things are now ready. Yes. Listen, when the servant of God goes out mm -hmm. and they begin to do the will of God, Yes. By sharing the good news, the gospel, by being a witness for what the Lord has done in their lives. Listen, you know, because when we when we share what goes on in our lives and we can identify with the person that may be going through something similar, they would understand exactly what we're talking about. Amen. And so that's that's why it's necessary for every Christian to go into the highways and heavens. Because some things you may have experienced, I may not have experienced. Amen. And that person is waiting for you to reach out to them. Amen? Amen. And so that's how we win over souls collectively to our Lord as we begin to go into the highways and hedges and, come and help others to see what God is trying to do for them in their lives yes. by sharing the goodness of Christ with them. Amen? Amen. And, and now as we move forward, as we move forward and we see in the text it says in verse 17, And his servant said at supper time and said to them that all that were bidden come, all things are now ready. In verse 18, And they all with one consent Begin to make excuses. Amen. Now, how often is everybody gonna make an excuse? Amen. Not, not, not one person stood by to listen to say, "Okay, I'm coming." But, but everybody in this case say, with one excuse, one consent, I got some excuses. I got to go. I, I, I got this going on in my life. I got that going on in my life. I can't do it because this is going on. The first one said, I bought a piece of ground and I must need go and see it. I pray that you have me excuse. Mm -hmm. Let's stop right there for a minute. Amen. When the servant of God came and offered you a good place at the table of the Lord. Amen. A good place, because this is actually what it is, right? Amen. The Lord is offering us salvation. This is a good place for us to be at that table. The feast of the Lord is going to be going on. Amen. And, and, and here goes this servant. Went out and asked, invited. And with one consent, they all make excuses. And this fellow says, I bought a piece of ground. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. But, uh... You bought some land. Yeah. I can assure you that land ain't gonna move nowhere. Amen. Amen. Now I figure you can go eat a little something Amen. and come back later Amen. and check on your land. Amen. 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 Come on with me, somebody. All right. But with one consent, they all made excuse. I don't listen. In short, I don't have time to hang out with Jesus right now. Amen. I don't have time for Jesus to hang out with him. Amen. Amen. I like what's going on in my life. Surprisingly, you hear some people say that for real. Amen. Amen. They like what they got going on in their life. Uh, and they, they, I like to say, you love the sin that you're in. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Help us, Lord. Have mercy on us. And another said, I have bought five yoke of oxen. Yes. I, and I go to prove them. 
Listen, yeah, I don't know about you, but it seems like the day you can plow with them oxen tomorrow. Amen. Eat the day and go plow tomorrow. Amen? Because them oxen they ain't going to go nowhere. You can throw a little feed on them and let them graze in the field. They'll be all right. Amen. But with one consent. I don't want to hang out with Jesus today. Amen? Here comes the excuses. Finally, the servant says, not the servant, but another says that I have married a wife. Amen. And therefore, I cannot come. All I need is one day with you, brother. Amen. I need you to experience and taste the grace of God. And it will be well with you from that day forth. Amen. You taste the grace of God, it's likely that a man will never change from that course when he experienced the goodness of God in their life. Amen. And when you experience that goodness, one thing is certain. You will be willing to tell the story to somebody else. Amen? Amen. Yes. And so, with one consent, the servant obviously then did all he could to compel these folks right here and got no, no results. So he came back to his Lord and said, in, in short, I was unsuccessful today. Nobody accepted the invitation. Amen. Now our sir, our Lord got angry. All right. Woo! Yeah. Lord have mercy. We need the mercy of God on our side. Amen. Amen. You, can you look back into the scriptures wherein the Lord got angry? Amen. And, and, and when he got angry, he began to execute his swift judgment. Amen. And wrath fell upon the people oftentimes. Right. I can remember when Moses had to run and pray and the Lord stopped me. Yes. Don't destroy them all. The Lord was, went through the camp and about 20-some thousand people died right there, but Moses had to stop. Lord, have mercy. Thank you, Lord, for no, Lord, whoo, if it wasn't for that right there, if we didn't have the mercy and grace of God now, yes. Lord, have mercy. There'd be plenty of dead people done going right now. Amen. Because of the wrong some people doing with boldness. Amen. Lord, have mercy upon us. And then, and then now, here is this. When he went back to the Lord and the Lord was angry, yes. the Lord said these words. <clears throat> so the servant came and showed his Lord these things. Then the master of the house being angry said to his servant, go out quickly into the streets and lanes of the city and bring in hither the poor, the man, the hawk, and the blind. Now, I might stop right there to put in a plug. Every now and again, some people feel the need to look over these people for whatever reason. All right. But you have got to understand they people too. Amen. They, they poor. Mm -hmm. they, ain't, they pockets ain't deep like some people. Amen. Amen. They got souls. Amen. They got souls. They bingo. They got souls. They hawk. They maim. They missing limbs. They might be paralyzed. They might be blind. Right. All right. Whatever the case may be. But they got a soul on the inside Amen. that needs saving. Amen? Amen. So they should always be a part of your invitation to Christ. It don't matter who they are. Yes. Everybody needs a savior for their soul, whether they recognize it or not. Amen. And prayerfully, with, with your witnessing and the Holy Spirit moving, they can see it too that they need a Savior for their soul and accept Christ. Amen? Amen. And so as time progressed in this scenario, the servant said, Lord, it is done that thou commandest me, and yet there is room. And the Lord said to the servant, go into the highways and hedges. Yes. And he said something in particular. Compel them to come. And this is my last point. Give a compelling story of why one should come and accept this invitation to Christ. You got to give a compelling story. You know, like a like a like an attorney gives it a compelling argument Amen. to either prosecute a case or defend it. You got to give a compelling story as to why. This person you talking to should accept this invitation to come to Christ. Amen. And don't be ashamed of the gospel. Don't be afraid to speak it. You gotta reach on the inside and gird up your loins and get bold and go in the power of his might. Lord, help me. Give me strength yes. to do what I'm supposed to do today. Guide me 
You know, when you pray in the morning time and the Lord might give you guidance as to where you're going to go at in the course of the day, who you're going to talk to, He yeah. prepares you for right. what you're going to do. And then He gives a word of inspiration in your spirit. Yeah. So that's the things you talk about. Amen. And he'll, yeah. he's, they're just ready to hear it. Right. You'll be surprised the response you get sometime when you respond to the to people how God put in stuff in your spirit. All right. You'll be surprised. Yeah. And so as, as the servant gives this compelling story as to why they should accept Christ. Yes. Because see, ain't a seat in the kingdom of God is going to be empty. All right. Not a single seat. All right. When, when, when the Lord says, when he hit the gavel and says, oh, yes. the case is done. Yes. Everybody that's going to be in heaven. There's a seat for everyone that's going to be there. There will be a single empty seat. Amen. Because God will will be done. Amen. You know, I can I can reach back and, and look to the book of Revelation as I've read it on several occasions, and I see where one stood up in heaven and says, How long, Lord, before we come into your kingdom? Jesus says, Lay down and take your rest. Because there are many others to come. Amen. Right. It ain't over till God says it's over. Amen? Yeah. So will you make excuses also? Will you make excuses also? It is a time, my friends, that we get up and do what God has called us to do yeah. so that we can see a greater result and a turnaround in the kingdom of God, bringing souls to Christ. And I say to you in closing, God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask of Him. Amen. All we have to do is have a made up mind to do that which he calls us to do. Amen? Amen. Will you make excuses also? Amen. 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 And amen. amen. The doors of the church are open. Yes. Listen, I, I know just as well as anybody else when you take a good self-evaluation of your own life. You can see where you fall short at and sometimes you can see it more clear than anybody else can. And, and sometimes you get a little cloudy. Yes. But God is there to help you. Amen. Amen. And so I want to say to you today, sometimes we had excuses. Yes. Sometimes we fell by the wayside. Yes. Sometimes we didn't quite do what God wanted us to do. Right. That's all right. Lord, forgive me. That's the response. Amen. Yes. From your pure unadulterated, sincere heart. Yeah. Lord, forgive me. And get back on the course. Yeah. Let him guide you, let him direct you. And let him lead you into the place where he wants you to be. Because he has ordained great work for you to perform. Yes. There's many people that's going to be led out of a dark place because of you. Yeah. And all you have to do is stand up and be strong about it. Yeah. Not ashamed nor afraid. And so if you are here today and you need Christ as your Savior, then accept Him, because that is where the journey begins with Him. Just like this invitation was given by the Lord's servant here today, Amen. this is the same invitation that I am giving. That you come, for all things are now ready. He is ready for you to accept Him, and this is your day, and this is your hour. Yeah. And then, if that's not enough, I want to be, if there's any who need prayer, to get back in your position in life so that the Lord can take you to better places. Yeah. If you made excuses, now it's time to accept it so that the Lord can move you forward. Yeah. And that, if that's you, then I want you to pray and ask the Lord to work it out for you. Yeah. And then if you're here, maybe to pray for others, that the Lord will save your loved ones, that they will save your friends yeah. or your co-workers, whatever the case may be. Yeah. We ask that you pray for them diligently because everybody needs an intercessor. Amen? Amen. And so as we pray today, we want you to remember our leaders in this country, yeah. remember our church leaders, our bishops, and remember our preachers, and remember every congregation that, that across this world because we all need to be faithful and committed to the kingdom of God so that we can do our parts and hear well done one day for our faithful service. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, we thank you, O Lord, for your love, your kindness, your grace, and your mercy that you give us anew each day. Lord, we thank you for being mindful enough of us to call us out of a dark world. Thank you, Lord. 
And Lord, we thank you for giving your son Jesus, who laid his life down for us, yes. accomplishing your will that you have sent him to perform. And Lord Jesus, we say thank you for doing all that you have done for us. Yes. And, and Lord, we thank you for the blessed Holy Spirit, that our comforter, our sanctifier, our present help. Yes. Holy Spirit, we thank you for being ever present in our lives and helping us to perform that which God has called us to do. Yes. And now, Lord, as we come calling upon you, we ask that you forgive us of all those things, sins and shortcomings that caused us to fall by the wayside and not perform that which you have called us to do. Yes. Help us, Lord, to get back on the course. Lord, if any calling you for salvation, touch and save, heal and deliver right now, Lord. Yes, Lord. And then, oh Lord, if there be any that is here that is sick, that is that may need a little encouragement and lifting up, Lord, we ask that you be a healer for them right now. Be a deliverer for them right now. Be a yoke destroyer for them right now, Lord. And Lord, I thank you and praise you for all that you do, Lord. Be with our nation. Be with our, our country. Be with the people, Lord, as it appears that there's a lot of murdering going on in our land, Lord. Yeah. And I pray that you touch the hearts of the people, Lord, that they may see and know and understand that they need a Savior for their souls. Yeah. Lord, I thank you and praise you now for all that you do. And for it is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen. and amen. I want to thank Reverend Shaw for that message. Will you make excuses also? And we need to hear that sometime to let him know that, you know, we all have our part to play yes. to edify God's kingdom and to go out and spread the word, the gospel. Don't be afraid of the gospel, he said, the good news. Uh, at this time, we will hear some uh, very important messages from Sister Johnson on the reopening of our church. So please give her your undivided attention at this time. Dr. Rochelle Walensky, who is the director of the CDC, Henry McMasters, the governor of the state of South Carolina, and Bishop William J. White, who is the bishop of the Diocese of the Southeast. They have given us permission now to convene our church services, which makes us very, very happy. Now, our church services will begin on Sunday, June the 27th at 9 o'clock, and it's going to be held in our fellowship hall. Now, a lot of people are asking me, why aren't we having the service in our church? But we're having the services in our fellowship hall because our sanctuary needs repaired and remodeling downstairs. So we're going to be using our fellowship hall. Now there's a catch to that. They have allotted us only 50 people to attend services as of right now. As the time goes by, they're going to increase these numbers. But for right now, we can only have 50 people in the fellowship hall on the 27th. So what we're asking you to do is to sign up your family and you can sign up your family by either emailing me at rbj red girl one the number one at att.net and also my telephone number is listed in the church directory now we want to be fair about this and we want to work together so that, especially on our uh, communion Sundays. So if you take communion on the first Sunday, let your family or another family take it on the third Sunday. And that would be fair for all of us. Mm -hmm. um, I think the only other thing that we need to remind you of is that we're going to be in the fellowship hall. We're going to open the doors. I don't think the window's going to be open, but that breeze goes through the fellowship hall. So just dress casual and come out for worship. This is, um, this is all that I have to uh, mention to you today, but uh, just blessing to you all. Brother Gibbons. Thank you, Sister Johnson, for that uh, very important information.
A uh, couple of announcements uh, found out that Sister Beverly Kiba is at home now recovering, but she's not taking visitors yet, so please uh, give her a call or her husband a call or send her a text. And Sister Willie Mae West is still recovering. Uh, they released my father-in-law from the hospital. He's now headed to Heartland Nursing Home in North Charleston. Uh, thank God, and God is still in the healing business. Amen. Amen. Uh, we want to thank Reverend Shaw once again for that uh, sermon today, and Amen. thank you, Reverend Shaw. And, Amen. You know, feel, I feel free to call on you when I need you, then. Amen. Because he's a, he's not one who likes to make excuses. I like that. Amen. Amen. <laughs> I like the line when you said you don't even give your family the option and friends. Just come on, let's go. I, we need to do this. Amen. <laughs> uh, don't don't let them off the hook easy. All right, this time we'll give you an opportunity to continue to send your tithes and offering in. You can do that two ways. You can use uh, the push pay app, and that information is at the bottom of the screen. Or you can mail it to New Bethel Reformed Episcopal Church, 1941 Hill Avenue, North Charleston, South Carolina, 29405. Continue to pray for the COVID situation. Continue to pray for us as we continue our search for a pastor. We are receiving applications until July 15th. July 15th, pray for all our homebound members and pray for our kids who will soon be out of school. Amen. Keep them from all harm and danger to the Son of God, please, Lord. And let us all have a safe summer. At this time, we will have the benediction by the Reverend Kenneth Shaw. Thank you. Well, I count it a privilege to have been here with you today. God bless you. May heaven smile upon you. And we thank you also for having me today. And as I've stated in the past, I always feel the love for being here. So you, I consider you my family, so I guess Brother Gillian said, come on, I need you. There it is what it is, all right? Amen. So I, I've risen to the occasion. And accommodations were made. So Amen. God bless you, may heaven smile upon you. Let us stand to be dismissed. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and ever. Amen. 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 And amen. Amen. Depart in peace to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you for tuning in our morning worship service. You have just heard Reverend Kenneth Shaw from Christ Reformed Episcopal Church message. Will you make excuses also? We pray that this message richly blesses you. As stated earlier, in-person services will begin on 4th Sunday, June 27th at 9 a.m. in the William J. White Fellowship Hall. In order to attend in-person services, you must sign up with our church secretary, Sister Ruby Johnson, via email. Services will also be live-streamed via YouTube and on our church Facebook page. As always, walk in faith, stay safe, and be blessed. See you very soon, New Bethel Church family. Amen.